Hey everyone, so today it's been a while since we've done an introduction to a newer brand. So I wanted to dive into one that maybe you're not familiar with from glasses or sunglasses, but you've probably heard of in other ways. This is one of the fashion brands. Today we are going to dive into and take a look at Bottega Veneta. And I'm probably butchering the name, but eh, you'll forgive me when you see what we've got. Maybe. For starters, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button down below. It keeps me here, keeps you coming back, and that makes it all the more fun for all of us. But what we're actually here to focus on is the new collection. So Bottega Veneta is all designed by Daniel Lee at this point. And honestly, I don't expect anything really super cool when it comes to designer or brand names. You know, they usually are more mass market. They're not gonna be the more unique designs. Certainly nothing that really makes me go, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then this happened, and it was an accidental thing. I, I kind of stumbled upon Curring, which is a major luxury, uh, major luxury manufacturer, owner, I don't know exactly what their setup is, but they own a lot of luxury brands. Not license, they actually own the brand. But what it amounts to is I discovered some of the Bottegas were Japanese made, which in our world is kind of the top of the top. It doesn't get better than really Japanese made eyewear. So I had to get my hands on it, see it, check it out. Other Japanese made, you know, we've got Anna Karen Carlson, which is a Japanese made, at least in her upper tier. She has some Italian made stuff that's a little bit lower rung, but then you've got Jacques Marie Maj, which is also gonna be a top tier Japanese manufactured, even some of the Porsche design stuff is gonna be Japanese made, titaniums. Then you've got Bevel, which is an all titanium Japanese line that we also just got. I'm having fun, okay? We've got a lot of new things. We'll get to those eventually. But for now, it is Bottega that is stealing the show for me. And as far as their mark, they do have this. So this is gonna be their kind of more edgy collection. The sunglasses are the more edgy look. Then you've got this logo that actually reaches around to the front is their more edgy version still. And that's what I'm gonna mostly focus on because they're the cool ones and I can't help it. But then you've got their more subdued. I think they're calling this the contemporary, which has just a smaller double slash on the temple, but still overall really nice designs. But kind of what I wanted to hit home here is it's really hard to find nice made tortoise. It's, I don't know why, okay? And this is where my dislike for most tortoise comes from. They're all very bland, the cuts aren't great, you know, you don't have good pattern or it's really just not laid out well, but you'll notice across the Bottegas in their tortoise, you've got a lot of color, very nice symmetry or asymmetry, as the case may be, as the designers actually take a little bit extra time to make sure the pattern lays out well within the material, which just another step, beautiful polish on these things, and maybe we'll do some cinematics, maybe we won't. Depends on how I'm feeling today and how quick I need to get this video posted, or how much time I have to get it posted. Ultimately, that's the thing, it's time. Lenses are nothing too special in these, so I definitely would recommend upgrading lenses if you're gonna go that route. Uh, you know, whether you're going prescription or just a really good stock replacement, they're not bad by any means. Their brown is actually pretty good. It's a nice little contrast. There's no backside AR, which for me personally is kind of a trigger point because I don't like the reflections on the back end of the lens. But again, it's nothing terrible. I mean, and some people would tell you that an anti-reflective coating on sunglasses is terrible because it makes them hard to clean because we can't use the really, really good coatings that make them oleophobic and, oil buildup and all that jazz, but ultimately what it amounts to is the design of the frame. The manufacturing of the frame is all really, really good. You know, there's detailing on these you really see in Jacques Marie Mage type things, which is just a very subtle detail that most would never even notice, but there's a small little series of cuts here in the back. And that just adds a little bit more grip behind the ear 
you know, well-fitted acetate frame that's nice and ergonomically balanced that's not necessarily needed, but it is a little detail that just goes more towards it. I have cut those into frames that we have a difficult time fitting, so it's a thing. It happens, okay? It is beneficial. And Operator error. I don't know what I'm doing today. You ever have one of those days? It's been so long since I've done this, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, so on the hinges, they are actually nice. Now, I did talk to one of my manufacturing friends about this because it did catch my eye that it's a little bit thin right here at the front edge. What that amounts to is they're still using a really high grade five barrel hinge. It's just one that rather than having that panoscopic tilt angle built into the hinge with very minimal adjustment, the panoscopic tilt is flat from the factory it is adjusted in and everything is finished from there so it does give a little bit room for easier adjustments and fitting when it comes to how tilted or not tilted the glasses are which is great especially if you have a little bit more cheek fluff hmm. yeah so on this one you know, you've got kind of the traditional aviator and nothing really special. They have made some changes to that classic aviator design that I think spices it up a little bit. It's a really cool, classic, super nice pair of sunglasses. And if you guys like this line, maybe we'll go through and do a full review on each one, but that's not what we're doing today. More of a brand overview. Now this one you will see, as I showed earlier, has that full wraparound logo. The material is a little bit chunkier. You got some nice beveling across the top, harder edged lines, just really fancy. And again, kind of a basic gray lens, nothing particularly special, but just a really cool looking pair I'm gonna end up with this one. I've tried to talk myself out of it since it came in. And of course, they do make the opticals as well. So we have the very nice ophthalmic frame. Still that same family as we have that sash that wraps all the way around to the front. A Little bit cooler material, and this one, as I understand it, is an exclusive for Bottega with that little color cut in the middle of it. Which is cool, it's a subtle detail, but it's really cool. Just a nice, clean, elegant look, which is hard to come by, but, but, oh wait, there is always gonna be the beautiful cat eye that stills my heart, and it happens every time. Super edgy, super vibrant red, very, very Italian passionate. Incidentally, this is one of the few that is made in Italy. I don't know exactly why. The material itself still feels like it's possibly Japanese acetate. I won't know that answer. I don't know that answer. I'll figure it out depending on how these wear over time will be very easy to tell. It, I, I think it's Japanese acetate, but it is still made in Italy for whatever reason. Same hinges we saw on the other one, so I don't know what the distinction there is that creates it, but what's really cool and probably the reason it is Italian made is all these extra angles and cuts do require some specialized machines, which I am guessing they were not willing to do in Japan. Japanese made stuff is traditionally more traditional. Go figure. But it is a wicked cool pair of sunglasses. There's a really cool design. This is some of their origin series, which is the more signature shapes. Very strong cat eye cut, very cool look. And I don't know if you can quite make it out on camera, but you've got a very subtle red flash to the lenses. That's cool, it's brown with a red base. You know, again, the lenses, nothing special. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you there's a story there, because there's not. Fortunately, all, most all lenses are replaceable. Now, this one, you won't see me give a whole lot of love for metals. As you know, I am more of an acetate guy and it just is what it is. But their metals are they're pretty nice. The plating is very smooth. There's no sort of pitting, no sort of defects in the finish itself, which is always nice to see at this kind of a price point because it does take a little extra effort to get there. The lenses in these, kind of a gray category two. Again, nothing particularly special, but it is nice to see the metal pads at this kind of a price point. So overall, pretty lightweight. Most of the Bottega stuff, you're gonna be around four to 600 or so. I think the most expensive is right at six, actually. So there you go. Nothing too insane. I think the metals are in that five range. 
to the ophthalmics, a little bit less expensive, obviously, because they're not paying for sun lenses in them on top of everything else. But the metal on this one, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about the overall look and feel of these that's really nice. I, it's, that's kind of the whole reason I got the line. You can see we actually do still have those cuts, even in the metal frame, to add just a little bit more bite back here, which is always nice to see, especially when you've got kind of a slicker material to begin with. There's just something about this pair. You cannot put that on and tell me you don't like it. And I don't even wear aviators well. Uh, but I digress. So, all that said, tell me what you think of this collection. Do you want to see more of it? More of the individual pieces? More in-depth reviews for each piece? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see how it goes. Let me know your thoughts, and on that, I will catch you next time.